There is a chapter in the history of philosophy, a very recent chapter. I sometimes characterize myself as a historian of philosophy, of the, of the, of the, of the, uh, history, uh, the history of philosophy of the last ten minutes. And I'll give you a case by it. It's, it's a bit of an exaggeration, not ten minutes. There's a, a phase in, a very recent phase in analytical philosophy, which is the phase of the three incredulous stares. But I'm the only one who knows about it, so I, you know, and, and it's past now. There are the three, you all know, of course, about David Lewis's incredulous stare. But it's even worse with the other two. <laughs> <laughs> one of the other, very recent to you, the more you're up on things, you'll know what I'm talking about. And that has to do with Williamson's doctrine of uh, vagueness. So everyone in this room is either rich or not rich. It's a fact. We can never know this. And that, when it came out, I mean, that nowadays you pick up the latest uh, journal of philosophy, someone writes an article and so on. And, oh, yeah, there, there, there's, uh, there's uh, 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 Williamson's position on that. That's one position on the position of the view of Vegas. That was not how the book was received. It was received with the incredulous stare. This is absurd. And the third is the greatest of all. And that is the incredulous stare right in this department <laughs> which was directed to Graham Priest when he said there could be a sentence. Not only could be a sentence, there was a sentence. He produced a sentence which was both true and false. <laughs> and I said, I was ahead of the game then. I said, this has to be taken seriously. I was having lunch with our two logicians. This was Jose, you know, sounding off. <laughs> this is how the history has been changed. When Grand Priest began, by the way, you know his book, by the way, was turned down by ten publishers. <laughs> it was turned down, it was by everybody who was in this area of logic. It was accepted only when the leading philosopher of the time, David Lewis, weighed in. Okay. Um, now, notice the difference that's taken place in discussions of the uh, liar paradox. This is almost the position of a grand priest. And I can explain why, by the way. In retrospect, again, anyone here who's involved with this literature, this is just a fact. If you're involved with this literature, you will certainly almost agree with me with the following thesis. That of the leading responses, resolutions, say four or five best resolutions we have available of the lie of paradox, among researchers today, and I endorse this, Grand Priest's position is fully among them. In other words, it's not extravagant. I mean, it's so desperate, the state of affairs. <laughs> but that's true, by the way. 